how did I become Miss America? That is the number one asked question I always get, and this series is answering just that very question. Hi everyone, I'm Nina Davalori. I was the first South Asian to win the title of Miss America in 2014, and I am finally doing my tell-all of how I became Miss America, because this is the number one question I get asked all the time, and I have never in depth answered that question from beginning to end. In this series, I'm gonna share how I became Miss America, the good, the bad, the ugly, the nitty gritty, the details, everything about pageants that you didn't know that you didn't know that you needed to know because there's a lot of things behind the scenes that have happened. There's videos, there's clips, there's old pageant archive footage. It's gonna be really fun. <laughs> and I'm really excited for this because I have never shared any of this because honestly, I wasn't ready for it. There was so much that happened and I needed the hindsight to be able to actually share it in a truthful way and in an honest way without worrying about any repercussions or what people would say or what people would think because this is my story and it's my journey and I'm finally ready to honor that part of it. And I can't wait to let you in and for you to hear it because it was such a monumental moment and experience and um, yeah, there's just so much here. I'm so happy that you're joining me. Before we get into it, please like, subscribe, comment. I promise you, this is a series that you do not want to miss. <laughs> so, you know, ring the bell, do all the things that you gotta do on YouTube, because not only that, it really does help the community that I hope that we can build here. And yes, while Miss America was an experience, there's a lot of things about mental health that I'm gonna be sharing that I hope that you will um, be able to take away. I hope this series helps someone who is either struggling with doing something unconventional, maybe wanting to be the first in their own category, uh, mental health and beauty standards, all of that is, um, is part of the story. So um, yeah, thank you for joining and please subscribe. So now let's get right into it. <laughs> first off, I'm getting ready today because I am going to a fundraiser for Miss New York. I am the surprise act. They asked if I would be involved and help them uh, with this fundraiser. And I have not been in pageant world in so long, or I should say back in pageant world in so long because I think I've just stepped away from it for a long time. I needed a little break from pageant world and you will find out why I needed that little break because it's a lot. There's a lot of things that go into behind the scenes of not only competing for Miss America, but like winning and the preparation and the amount of focus and work and dedication because it's not a one or two year thing. It's truly a lifelong thing that I've prepared for in, in many ways, which, you know, I didn't realize, but it, it, you know, it was, it was many things along the way. So anyways, I'm getting ready for that. And I was like, there's no better time to start this series because I'm in, I'm in the world. I'm in the pageant world. So first things first, we're going to go back to Nina's very first pageant because that is where all of this starts. My very first pageant in the Miss America organization was Miss Southwest Michigan teen. So my family lived in Michigan at the time and we had moved from Oklahoma to Michigan when I was 10. So actually, fun fact, I was born in Syracuse, New York. My grandparents raised me in Vijaywada, India, which is in Andhra Pradesh for two years. I went over there when I was six months and then I came back here when I was two and a half years old. So my dad was in his residency, my mom was working and they just didn't have the income to send both me and my sister to daycare and my sister is 18 months older than I am. And so when I came back to the US, I didn't speak any English. My first language was Telugu because I had grown up there. And my parents tell us that I taught my sister Telugu and she taught me um, English, which is really cute. And so when I was four, my family moved to Oklahoma. My dad had finished his residency and he had gotten his first job as an attending in Oklahoma. And I will always say like, pageants in Oklahoma, Miss Oklahoma is a celebrity. Like she is a celebrity. So I had been introduced to pageant world through dance. So I had grown up a dancer. I was in ballet, jazz, tap, point, lyrical, hip hop, like all, all forms of dance I grew up doing when we moved to Oklahoma. So I started dance when I was 
five years old. And so kind of through dance world, I'd known this like competition world existed. Um, and so I had knew, known that there was this group of dancers who also were somehow connected in pageants. The first Miss America I really remember watching win was Miss Hawaii. Angela Barrichio won Miss America representing the state of Hawaii in the year 2001. And I remember she had done a Hawaiian dance for her talent and it was so cultural and so beautiful. And she was the first Asian American to ever win. She was Filipino. And um, it was, that's just who I remember watching. And I kind of like had that in my mind, but I never really thought much more of it. I just never was like, oh, can that be me? Like even when I saw Angela win, I remember thinking her talent was so beautiful, but I was still kind of too young. Like there was something I was drawn to, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And I have to take a second to say that Miss America and Miss USA are completely different organizations. So Miss America is the longest running pageant in history. It is 103, maybe four years old now, exactly, I can't remember, over 100 years old. And we are very much scholarship, service, and talent driven. So Miss USA and Miss America are different. Miss USA is the organization that used to be owned by Donald Trump and has now been sold several times. So no, I have never met Trump. I have never been affiliated with him. Miss America is very different than Miss USA. I would say USA is more acting modeling focused, which is what you win. You win a modeling contract when you win Miss USA. Um, and Miss America is very much a service oriented job. And you also win scholarship money to further your education, which as some of you know, I'm using to pursue my master's at NYU right now in vocal performance. So um, the year as Miss America, you are advocating for your platform and my platform was celebrating diversity through cultural competency. And it's very much you're speaking, you're touring and traveling, working with advocacy groups and activism. I'd worked so much in with the Obama administration and the White House AAPI initiative. So there's just very much, it's very much a service and activism job in addition to scholarship money. And in the competition itself, there's a talent portion of competition, which is actually the most heavily weighted portion of competition. And Miss USA has no talent, so there's no talent of portion of competition in that pageant. So those are kind of the, the main differences, but um, I had always kind of just been drawn to pageant world. And the very first time that I was approached to even do a pageant was because my friend, between my sophomore and junior year of high school, my friend in high school was competing for Miss Southwest Michigan Teen. And she said, hey, you know, I'm doing this pageant and I think that you would be really good at it. You're really involved in your community. You have a talent like, you know, you should you should look into it, like do it with me. And I was like, OK, like that sounds really fun. And so I don't know if I necessarily would have like really pursued it if it didn't come my way, if that makes sense. Like I obviously had been very intrigued by the world and I watched you know I watched Miss America every year also I mean we have to acknowledge that India is obsessed with pageants and you know in the 90s I grew up with like the Aishwarya Rai's and Priyanka Chopra's who you know were all known from pageant world and so there was something intriguing definitely about this world in general but I had never known anything about the world and so finally, I was like, yeah, like I, I asked my mom and my mom was like, OK, you know, if you if you really want to do it, I told her, you know, that there was also scholarship money. It didn't cost anything to enter. That's also one of the big differences that, you know, people think that people spend so much money on pageants and like, yes, you can. But um, Miss America is is free to enter. We never had an entry fee. Um, and so, and you win scholarship money. So it was kind of like, okay, for my mom, she agreed to it. So this was when I was a teenager. So the phases of competition for a teenager are slightly different than a, um, than a Miss contestant. And so because I was a teenager, we had competed in talent, um, evening gown, on stage question, you have your private interview. And then instead of swimsuit, because I was a teen, we had like a fitness component. And the fitness component was you would wear like a sports outfit from 
whatever sport that you played or enjoyed. You could also just wear like a workout outfit. And so when I competed as a teen, I wore a little tennis outfit. I'm gonna show you my little tennis outfit if I have if I have a clip of that. There's one video that's missing in my in my teen, my first pageant competition. So whatever I have, I will insert. So I played tennis at the time, of course, like probably most Indian people. Um, also, I was a varsity tennis freshman player. I made varsity as a freshman. So I'm just gonna brag a little bit and say that I was a good tennis player. <laughs> or I mean, for my school, I was a good tennis player. Um, and I still, I actually still like started taking lessons again here in Chelsea because I just missed it a lot. And I was like, you know what? Like, why did I stop? Like I, actually tennis is like a really fun sport you can play for a while. Um, so anyways, basically that was what I did for my, um, for my fitness. And then the interview is like where I will always say, Miss America, whatever pageant you're in is always one in the interview room because I mean, at the end of the day, it is a job. And even for teens, like obviously when you're a teenager, it's not as big of a deal as um, you are when you're a Miss contestant. But even as a teenager, like your job is like, you're out in the community and you're speaking and you're talking with people and like, the most important thing is like, what is your first impression? Like, can you have a conversation? Can you have an intelligent conversation with, with anyone you meet and not be afraid? Can you walk into a room where you don't know a single person and be able to converse with them intellectually and have something to say that's interesting um, and not fake? And so your interview is very much like, that sets the tone for any phase of competition because it's the first time the judges meet you is actually off stage in the private interview room. And that is consistent for every single competition. So um, I remember like interview was always my favorite phase of competition because I was like, absolutely, I got this. I'm very introverted, but I'm a very well-spoken person. It's really weird to say, kind things to yourselves, which it shouldn't be, but it is. Um, I've always been that way. Like I've never had any training, just public speaking has come naturally to me. And I felt like it was a way for me to, um, you know, I'm the younger child. So I think there was always this thing where if I ever needed something, my sister always asked or spoke for the both of us. And so I never really had to speak much, but when, but I enjoyed it. Like I knew that I, there was something about being at a podium or being on stage or being in an interview where I felt like, oh, this isn't Nina. It was almost like it felt like a little bit of an alter ego, even though, of course, it's not. It's still my thoughts and opinions, but the pressure of like, oh, this is me having to perform versus, oh, no, this is pageant Nina is was there was like a difference and it felt different. And so I just felt so much more, I was able to come out of my shell. I think that's the best way that I can explain or describe it is like, it gave me freedom to really be able to express my thoughts and opinions. So basically my interview was the first thing I did. Um, I thought I did great because I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that went well. I answered every question. And it's also crazy because they ask you like political questions and and you're like 16 trying to answer these questions and like so you do have to be like somewhat well versed or you know interested in like be able to form a, an opinion on on you know topics that are controversial and be able to acknowledge both sides but take a stance which there's lots of problems that i have with just that whole pageant thing but you know that was kind of something that i had learned and just known early on and I was good at. So interview honestly came very easy to me. And so after interview is evening gown, which I loved my dress. This was like the first dress that I ever got. I think it was, my mom bought it for me. I think it was like $300, which was so expensive back at that time. And it still is, it's not nothing. Um, and we went to like our local pageant place. I remember, you know, I had had, I was gonna wear my prom dress and then my mom actually was like, well, why don't we like, maybe we can go see what they have, which I love Mama D for. Um, and so we ended up going and um, I found this like beautiful sequin, like almost fire dress. And that's what I ended up wearing. And I loved it. It was, ugh, it was, it was just everything I put it on and I was like, yes. And it like became my dress. And so I wore that. And then the talent was like the real kicker because 
like I said, I had grown up a dancer, so, and I was still dancing in high school, obviously, so like, dance would have been the natural choice for me to do, but because there's this little singer girl inside of me, I was like, maybe now is the time for me to sing because I'd sang in like choir, um, but I never really, like never had voice lessons. So I, you know, I could carry a tune. I knew how to do that. I was decent, but like never any formal training. And so I remember I was like, wait, well now's probably the time for me to experiment. It's like, let me see what's gonna happen in this pageant. And so I sang my little heart out. I sang Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive. I have no idea why I picked that song. I have no idea why I thought, yes, like this is the song that best represents me and my voice. And like, yes, of course, there's so many things I love about that song for sure. Do not get me wrong, but like it, was not the best use of my skills or talents to choose it, but hey, you know, you live, you learn. And I honestly, like, I, I went, I did it, I got through it, I sold it. I wore an Indian outfit for this, actually. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. So I wore an Indian outfit for this, and you know, because it was like, what, in the 70s, 80s? So like, I knew I needed that kind of vibe. And like, this Indian outfit I had, was honestly giving that vibe. So like, I remember there's a director of the pageant and they have to, you know, they approve like all your clothing to make sure that it is appropriate. It's a thing that they have to do in pageant world is approve what you're wearing. So, you know, he was like, oh, this is a talent outfit. Like, this is great. And I was like, thanks. Like, you know, he didn't really know that I was like Indian, I guess at this point or like where my family was from. Um, and so he was just like, this was, this is great. And I was like, thanks, I think so too. So I did that and then lo and behold, I won the pageant. <laughs> this was the first pageant I ever won. And like from the minute my name was called on that stage as Miss Southwest Michigan Teen, I was hooked. Like there's something so interesting about pageants because it, it's it's both good and bad. It's, you know, it's both and. Um, and like, you feel validated. You 100% there's a validation of your beauty, your speaking skills, your abilities to be this well-rounded young woman, but you're really being only validated by seven judges on that day. So I really do love the saying like, different day, different judges, different girl, because at the end of the day, pageants are so subjective. Like it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why I think I um, shy away from it now is because I struggle, I struggle with like, is it right or wrong to put a score on someone of like one to 10, especially on a teenager? Like, uh, you know, that's a whole separate conversation, but obviously relevant to, to what I'm grappling with. Oh. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call. I don't know who that is. So yeah, so there was just, there's just a lot there. It's, it's also hard because you have to win a local title before you can move on to the state competition. So a local title was Miss Southwest Michigan Teen. And then from there, because I won that title, I was, I qualified for Miss Michigan Teen. So you have to have like a qualifying round before you can move to the state round. So, you know, I had this confidence of like, wait, I, I'm good enough to compete at the state level like that's really cool i'm so excited like that's really awesome and i you know i won with singing and i i was like really excited about that too there is like an element of like confidence too that of course i gained in pageants that i hadn't gained um elsewhere because there's something about being on stage that just always felt like home for me and i think i found that performing through pageants, not only in the talent portion, but you get to show who you are. Like you get to showcase a part of yourself, you know, finding that whole part is also a journey, but you showcase parts of yourself that you're really proud of. And I'll always say like, you know, was Miss America every single bit of me? No, but there's still a lot of parts of me that are that person. Um, and I'm really proud of, of those parts of me and, I, and they'll forever stay with me because it's just who I am. But there's also parts of that person that you do have to let go because there's behaviors and things that you learn from pageant, whether that's beauty standards or feelings of not being enough, or you know, like you're only 
as good as your last title. There's a lot of other things, negative things that come with it too that you that I've had to learn how to let go of. But I remember after I had won my Southwest Michigan teen, you have a meeting with um, your judges, which is actually always my favorite part because uh, especially in the Miss America system, you always get a chance to meet with your judges panel if you win. Not If you don't win, you don't ever really meet with them um, because it's probably not the best of ideas. I've been on judging panels and I'm like, I do not want to meet with everyone. Um, but it's it's really special when you get to meet with the, with the winner and like share, basically they kind of share like, what they liked about you and things that you can improve on or work on as you get ready for the state competition, which in my case was Miss uh, was Miss Michigan Teen. And I remember the uh, one of the judges, sorry, this is really hard to do your bottom mascara and talk. Also, I should take the time to say that tonight I am singing one perfect moment from Bring It On. They were like, is there something you want to sing? And I was like, uh, I think one perfect moment is perfect for this moment because there's so much, even as I'm telling this story, there's so much that goes into behind the scenes that people don't know of winning a pageant that like, I feel like this, this, uh, the journey from Bring It On is actually, um, one of the most like perfect uh, ones as like a parallel, especially the song, I think. I'm honestly pretty much done with my makeup. But the last thing before I get going about um, winning the teen pageant is so after I met with the judges um, or as I'm meeting with the judges, so one of the judges, um, he didn't say this to me, but he said this to my directors and my directors had told me afterwards that when I had won, um, they were like, this this particular judge said when you walked out of interview said that's a future miss america right there like she has a miss america interview and this was before he saw me on stage like before any of that uh side of competition but he was just like you have a miss america here like she could actually really do this i think knowing that after my first competition in the miss america organization i felt like really confident. I mean, it's really nice to hear that. And so, and especially because that was like the phase of competition that I was so proud of um, and felt like I was just truly good at because it's judging you on what you're saying and how you're presenting yourself. I guess even though it's still judging you, which is still weird. Um, but yeah, like I, I remember them telling me that and I was like, wow, I might be good at this. And I still wasn't sure how, what that meant or if it was true or if it's someone just being nice, but it was definitely, um, a very validating moment of, oh, I think there's something here and I think I could actually, um, do well at Miss Michigan teen or maybe even Miss America teen and the rest is to be continued and the road to Miss Michigan teen is the next part of this story because um, basically that was my junior my entire junior year I was preparing for Miss Michigan teen so I won Miss Southwest Michigan teen in September of my junior year and then Miss Michigan teen was in July of that um, following of that summer. So between my um, junior and senior year. And so I had an entire year of being Miss Southwest Michigan teen where you prepare for Miss Michigan teen, you're doing appearances, you're being a title holder. That is a whole thing that people do not see. I think a lot of people think you just show up in the summer and are like, I'm here, I'm gonna do this. Um, but it's a lot of work involved in between to get ready for the state competition. And that is going to be my next video. So I hope you're enjoying this little series. I, this is episode part one of many more to come. And um, I hope you enjoy kind of seeing all the little things and, and, and the clips as well. So let me know from this video, maybe I'll do a Q and A. Um, let me know what your questions you have about pageant world, about anything that I've said today, because I feel like it could be fun to like also do Q and A's in between, in between these videos of things that I just like haven't gotten to, or I will get to in my next video or start off the next video with Q and A's because there's a lot of like, there's a lot of things about misconceptions about pageant world. And I think it is time to correct them. But for now, I'm going to head to this Miss New York fundraiser. I'm going to sing my little heart out. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, set your alerts, do all the YouTube things that we have to do here. And I will see you next time. Pageant Nina is signing off.